Okay, thank you, thank you, Peter, for your nice introduction, and uh, thank you, colleagues in the the audience, for uh, choosing this session over over the others. Um, let me upload my presentation. Let me open my presentation. It should be. Uh, is it this one? No, it's here. It's here. It's here. I've got it here now. Full screen. There we go. Okay. Here it is. So these, um, I'll use uh, the the 20 minutes or less than the 20 minutes. Hopefully, I have to give you an overview of a, a work stream on. Uh, we called it fiscal states in developing uh, economies. So this is a work stream where uh, I've been one of the key researchers together with uh, Kunal and uh, with a team of wonderful colleagues from uh, political science and economics. But this is uh, probably a simplification because we were much more diverse than that. And uh, I'll give an overview of what we did, the logic behind it what we were trying to achieve and why we think is important for uh, domestic resources mobilization. But it's essentially, we talk about taxation here. But from, from a different perspective, from a, uh, the perspective of uh, the structural conditions needed to develop taxation. So that's where uh, we are going. And this is uh, our web page where the project uh, is you will find all the information about the project and uh, the outputs. Um, we have uh, benefited from a wonderful collaboration with colleagues at the OECD Development Center. And I see Alexander here, thank you. Thank you to Federico Bonaglia as well for supporting us along the way and uh, for engaging with us uh, on this project. A little bit of a background on this. We all agree that it's not too difficult to identify needs for public spending. So states play an important role. And uh, especially from a developing economy point of view, are crucial actors, not just for economic, but for human development improvement. But the question is, how do we finance this? And uh, taxes are what you need. At least modern states are complex machines that rely largely on taxation. But where does this come from? Where does taxation come from in particular? The economic historians use the term fiscal states to indicate that you've got to research and understand the long-term process behind it, the long-term process of transformation of public finance institutions that lead you from, a, let's say, less advanced to modern forms of taxation, like broad-based taxation, income tax, for example. And uh, that's how we chose the term, and that's where we, we try to fit. This is policy relevant. We all agree in a development conference. It's about SDGs, and in particular, SDG 1. So this is uh, agreed. What is less agreed, and that's the academic side of what we are trying to do, is uh, um, we have studied the origins of taxation, but the academic debate on this and what we have read is mostly about advanced economies, how this happened, how the emergence of taxation, fiscal capacity, happened in the West especially. It's less clear how, whether this will happen and how this can happen in a less developed economy context. So from this point of view, we try to to, you know, to, to, to fit into debate. That's how we are uh, coming in. Let me show you a little bit of data on this uh, to motivate a little bit further. You will see here uh, um, standard variables. It's um, total resource taxes over GDP from our own in-house data set uh, at the UNU wider. And you have here the split on the left by income level and on the right the split by region. What we see is probably what you have seen before, the obvious fact that uh, advanced economies collect a lot less in terms of revenue, compared to, uh, a lot more compared to less developed economies. That's okay. 
And uh, if you do this uh, by region, you get more or less the same result. The regions of the world where the advanced economies are do a lot better in terms of uh, tax, uh, tax performance uh, as measured here. What is less obvious, and we are here, uh, we cover the period uh, between 2020 and 1995. What is less obvious, but uh, I think we see this is interesting, is that this gap over time is unchanged. So essentially, the gap in uh, total revenues over GDP is stable, whether you look at it by region, by income levels. For us, that was a starting point, because it suggests in a way that uh, deeper structural determinants of taxation and tax systems can be important here. And in particular, history, politics, institutions may explain this persistence over time of uh, gaps in, uh, gaps in uh, large gaps in uh, tax collection. So uh, why is this important? For at least three reasons. And uh, you know, the developing tax systems, developing fiscal capacity, uh, we use uh, all this term, borrowing from the recent uh, literature on this, is, uh, gives you at least uh, you know, uh, three reasons to be more hopeful in terms of uh, development. Uh, once, one is because going back to the earlier point I made, taxation allows you to spend. And in particular, again, stylized facts, this is a health spending standard, the World Bank variables. We see here in the split by region that uh, then uh, the same regions that we've seen before tax more are also those that tend to spend more on health, in particular, in this case. Second reason, uh, and uh, this is perhaps also not emphasized enough, if you learn how to tax, you also have access to powerful redistributive tools. Broad-based taxation, income taxes in particular, give you access to, uh, you know, allow you to develop uh, progressive taxation, and that can have a redi powerful redistributive impact. So, and third reason, and that's, uh, you know, the, the, that's uh, something also perhaps that should be emphasized more. We learn from, uh, from uh, the field of fiscal sociology that the learning to tax may come with a, a governance dividend, the so-called governance dividend. So once you start taxing, anyway, broad-based taxation in particular, citizens will react to that, will uh, tend to keep governments more accountable, and governments will respond in return, hopefully. So developing a, a virtuous cycle of uh, improved, improved governance. Okay. Uh, this is perhaps something that has not happened so far in less developed economy, and this is probably, this is I think the last uh, figure I'm going to show you. This is a standard voice and accountability index from uh, World Governance Indicators. Plot this over time in high income, low income economies. What you observe here is that uh, essentially there is a large gap between the two types of economies, and this is uh, again unchanged over time, probably reflecting the fact that a governance dividend has not happened in a, in a less developed economic context because there is something missing on, uh, in terms of taxation and learning how to tax. What have we done from the academic side? The main output, a special issue of the Journal of Institutional Economics. So, uh, and. Uh, at this point, I should uh, thank the editors of the journal because it was a really rewarding experience working uh, with them. The journal was very supportive, and in particular, uh, the editor-in-chief, Jeffrey Hodgson, was very supportive from the start of uh, this project, bringing together so, such a diverse group of, uh, of academics. These are the papers listed here. The good thing is that this is open access. We believe in making research open to everyone. So it's uh, all there um, for you to download um, free of charge. Um, the highlights on this. How can I give you in one slide what we actually found from uh, this special issue? Essentially, three things. History, politics, and institutions matter, all three of them. So simplifying a little bit, but probably I'm not doing justice to each of the papers, because uh, 
that, that they had a much richer content and findings that I'm putting it, that I can possibly put in a slide. I would say on the political side, we found that uh, political institutions holding, uh, you know, placing institutionalized limits on the executive matter, on the executive power matter. We also found that uh, politics matter in the sense that uh, taxation can happen, and often income tax has intro been introduced as one of the papers by Per Anderson shows in non democratic contexts where uh, there are more informal mechanisms that keep, like legislatures, that keep uh, rulers into account. On the institutional determinant side, there are at least three papers here that have been important in sense. Abrams, Tagem, and Oliver Morris, a work on taxation, tax performance on Africa, and find that uh, mechanisms of uh, accountability matter. And then uh, another set of papers finds that uh, to develop taxation, so to learn how to tax, you may need uh, other institutions that complement that. And uh, on this, I don't want to you know, I don't want to spoil it, but Marina is going to say more about this uh, in a bit, on the importance of having uh, property rights in place at the same time as, uh, as developing taxation. And uh, tomorrow, because uh, the discussion on this will go on tomorrow, Matthias uh, from how will tell you what he finds uh, in terms of uh, the complementarity of uh, the ability of a state to collect information as a complement for, uh, for uh, taxation. On the historical side, and here I finish with uh, the highlights from the special issue, Odelge will tell us more what uh, they find in Uganda, and in particular, pre-colonial history may be important. And uh, tomorrow, Leander Helding and uh, James Robinson had a paper on, uh, on Rwanda, instead arguing that history matters there, but in a different sense, because uh, uh, the, the ability of elites, uh, you know, how elites historically developed was uh, an obstacle to develop uh, states and state capacity as uh, we, uh, we intended these days. So there is plenty for, uh, for those interested on this to, to read, and I hope you will read the special issue, and we'll hear more from uh, authors today and tomorrow on uh, actually the papers. What I want to tell you a little bit more in the next few minutes is instead, what do we learn? What do we think we learn from this? So, some lessons. Uh, it's always uh, you know, difficult when you do this type of research then to translate it into policy prescriptions. So I, I wouldn't say these are uh, actually prescriptions, but uh, I would say we learn uh, something to be aware of if you want to develop fiscal states, if you want to develop uh, public finance institutions and taxation in particular. So the first finding, uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. We are arguing here that uh, effectively this is a long-term process. It may sound obvious, but it's not always obvious to those actually engaged in policy that uh, taxation is not something that happens overnight. We often tend to focus on uh, what revenue administrations do, and the public economists can teach me a lot on this, and that's what we should be doing. What we are saying here is that uh, at the same time, we have to be aware that uh, deep structural conditions can facilitate or not the task of uh, revenue administrations, can uh, support or not their functioning. So, in a way, if you want to take this uh, one step further, the Rome wasn't built in a, in a day statement is uh, while you develop taxation, it's inevitable that you have to rely also on other sources of finance, including aid. We are simply saying stay the course on this and uh, you know, keep going because it's a long-term process, a long-term process. Similarly, history matters. That's the second lesson we learn. Um, here, the message is you have to be aware that uh, if in some parts of an economy, in some regions, tax compliance, for example, it's not as strong as you would like it to be, look at also how history played a role there. And uh, again, you know, this is about Odelges and uh, Merima Ali's uh, paper, what, what happened uh, in Uganda. Understanding these mechanisms may help to explain 
you know, understanding our history plays may help you to explain why a reform works or doesn't work. And uh, next, we argue politics matters, and this is about the political environment, both from a, an informal point of view, the, 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 the mechanisms, understanding how elites keep each other in check, but also from formal mechanisms. We argue, uh, Kunal, Abrams, and myself, in our paper, that uh, uh, formal mechanisms of uh, constraints on the executive can create the conditions for uh, investing in, uh, in tax systems. And if you want to put the politics matter claim in the SDG language, you can say this is where there is a definitely a point, you know, a, a connection between SDG 16 about accountable institutions and SDG 17. And finally, do not look at uh, fiscal capacity, so at taxation in isolation, because uh, we learn from uh, Marina and Michelle Dassi's paper, and we learn from uh, Matthias' uh, paper, Hillel's, and uh, Jose Perez Cagia's paper that uh, you need other things in place if we, at the same time if you want to support the process of uh, learning from tax, uh, of uh, learning to tax. I think I'm done. That's all I have for now. So I finished even earlier. Thank you. Thank you.